Moving on, Israel's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett continuing in his first official visit to the United States. Officials in D.C. promising to maintain strong connections and support for Israel. Uh, I bring from Israel a new spirit, a spirit of uh, folks who sometimes harbor different opinions but work together in cooperation, in goodwill, in a spirit of unity, and we work hard to find the common things that we do agree upon and move forward on it. Uh, and it. And it seems to be working. Additionally, aside from Secretary of State Blinken, Bennett has met up with APAC CEO Howard Kaur and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin ahead of his meetings with President Biden. Bennett is expected to outline for the president his alternative to the JCPOA nuclear agreement. But with us now to discuss is ILTV reporter Asaf Nissan. Asaf, thank you as always for being with us. Thank you so much. All right, so you know, what are we expecting to see at this meeting between President Biden and Prime Minister Bennett? We're expecting both sides to be very adamant on what they want to bring to the table. We're going to see a Biden, Biden the administration trying to push in a more diplomatic solution. As for the fact they do believe that the diplomatic channel will be the way to, to end up with a more normal deal or maybe even disqualifying the current deal or any sorts of needed deal on the table. But Israel, on the other hand, will try to place an alternative, either not, not to have one at all or maybe somewhat of a softer version that can help, well, not even prevent at this point with the fact that the nuclear bomb is pretty much imminent. But Well, and, well we've heard, you know, a, a brief suggested outline of what this, of what Bennett's alternative to the JCPOA might include, which, uh, you know, is, is a, a cooperation of, of, uh, of a coalition, rather, of various countries and, and, uh, and certain economic sanctions and things like that. And of course, leaving aside the option for Bennett uh, and Israel to continue certain uh, uh, attacks against Iran directly. But it's been suggested, actually, that the White House knows how lost the Iran deal might actually be and is therefore more open to Israeli proposals. Is that true? How will the Biden administration react? Well, from what we're seeing, I th a lot of voices, including government officials in the Biden administration, saying they know the deal's over. Iran's never going to come back to the table the way it was because especially with the bomb imminent and IC in power, we're not expecting any changes in policy towards a new deal. What they're going to expect pretty much is a much more prominent for show of force, maybe a way to sweeten some of the suggestions, but in the end of the day, we're still going to see uh, the U.S. more understanding the fact that Iran will not come back to the table. All right, now, according to, to the New York Times, one of the issues expected to come up here in the meeting is Israel's need to continue covert operations in Iran, uh, even if a new JCPOA agreement is signed. Why is that? Uh, and, and, you know, how are the intelligence communities of Israel and the United States intertwined when it comes to Iran? So, it's a, so this, for this two-part, we're actually going to start with the second one because we are talking about a history that's come along, come along ever since the U.S., lost control of Iran, let's say, during the revolution in 79. Mm. The U.S. has never really been able to push back a full range of intelligence network as such as Israel, and therefore has been more dependent on, Isra on Israel's intelligence in the last years more than anyone else. Now, they want to change that force. They want to bring back the intelligence grid done by the U.S., but in order to do so, they have to pretty much cooperate with Israel. Now, we've seen this cooperation happen during the Trump and Netanyahu administration to a height where we know the, the, the results, of course, being the withdrawal of the U.S. from the nuclear deal and Israel's more prominent and more aggressive attack towards Iran. But with the Biden administration, we've seen a lot of disdain and a lot of uh, mistrust between Biden and Netanyahu because Netanyahu, of course, sees Biden as still as a former VP for Obama, which, of course, Obama was the architect of the nuclear deal. And because of that, he still can't trust him that much. But now with the new regime in power and Bennett being much more open to the U.S. administration, they're hoping to rebuild, this, rebuild that trust. Sure. And it sounds, it sounds like with, uh, with the Biden administration lacking in intelligence uh, uh, apparatus in Iran, exactly. maybe they might be reliant on that. Real quick answer. Uh, we've heard talk of big changes in the U.S. visa policy. Anything to add about that? Well, from the meeting we've seen yesterday from Bennett, from Prime Minister Bennett in, in Secretary of State Blinken, Israel might be on, on a fast track to finally get the waiver they wanted for visas. Israelis have been suffering for years from a lack of acceptance of visas to the U.S., and now, finally, with a push from Blinken himself, actually, we might see the change. And during COVID of all times when travel is 
severely restricted. Exactly. All right, Asaf, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.